running should be joyous. It shouldn't be something that makes you sacrifice living. Talent is a, is a tool that you were born with. And it doesn't go away whether you weigh 160 pounds or 110 pounds. Like, talent is talent. And I didn't know of anyone that had struggled, come through it, and was like still performing at a high level. And I actually, now looking back, I did know people like that, but we just didn't talk about it. It wasn't like a thing you talked about. In college, I definitely, you know, slipped into disordered eating for a while. Um, and, and at first I got really great results. I got all these compliments and I won a bunch of national titles, but then I spent four years broken. And so it just became this spiral process of like getting healthy, getting injured, getting healthy, getting injured. And I think it was my body basically rebelling against what I had done to it. Um, it went the other way. I gained a ton of weight. I got out of shape. I wasn't happy. I was always thinking about food. I was always thinking about how many calories I had eaten. And I just, I didn't want to live that life anymore. I remember the first time I had like a skin fold test done and the person was like, oh, here's where you hide your fat, you know? And the person was just like a scientist. So they're like looking at it at a different angle. But all I heard was, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, you know? And bodies just are different. Like, I'm never gonna look like some of the athletes that I raced against. It wouldn't have mattered even if I starved myself, but does it matter? We need to be focusing on the way you're feeling and performing so much more than what it looks like. I started to sort of gauge my success on how healthy I've been. Like, how long have I been healthy? Well, you know, now I'm, so I'm going on two years, now I'm going on three years without a major injury. I mean, that's so much more important than being five pounds lighter. I would eat everything under the sun, including a mug full of M&Ms every night, and that made me happy, so that's what I did. And, I mean, I was running really well. I was like one of the top three runners in the world multiple years in a row, so I don't know, it was working out okay. Even recently, I posted a thing about my body in the New York City Marathon 2008, and. I posted it in response to an article I had read about collegiate athletes once again getting body shamed and being controlled and manipulated. And then the, the author of the article was on a podcast and I listened and he said, you know, yeah, you know, even Kara Goucher responded and yeah, she was a little chunky and jiggly in that picture she posted. And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> you're missing the point still. If you can't see that I was one of the best American athletes ever in that moment, and you're seeing Jiggle, you are part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. If we're letting people think that you have to look a certain way to be a runner, we're cutting off 99% of our community. You don't have to live this extreme lifestyle to have success. I think we're seeing that a lot with like this new generation of specifically female American distance athletes, like they're having full lives, they're married, they have children, they are older, they all these things and they're still running so well. Every athlete I ever trained with had some sort of hang up of food. And if we just normalized that and it wasn't like this bad secret thing and we were like, yeah, we feel this way and it's totally messed up, and it's, but it's not our fault. We were told from an early age, wherever it was, that like calories were bad and skinny is better. And how do we break that together? And well, like, what's your weakness? What's my weakness? And we, we shouldn't be ashamed of any of it. Like if we could share and open up, I think, I think that's what will really turn the tide. <laughs>